I would like to introduce Heidi Ardini. Heidi is a breast cancer survivor, and she has agreed to share her story with us today. Four days before Christmas, excuse me, four days after Christmas, <laughs> December 29th, 2009, the phone rings. It must be my brother asking what I decided to do for New Year's Eve. Hello? Hello, may I speak to Miss Heidi Ardini? This is she. Hello, Miss Ardini, this is your doctor. We've just received your biopsy results on the lump in your right breast. And I'm afraid that they came back positive for a grade three malignancy. I'm so sorry. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> and so my nightmare started. The fear, numbness, and disbelief, of course, hit me with the force of a tidal wave, the perfect storm. Those feelings naturally go without saying. However, I felt like I had crossed over into a completely different reality, somewhere in another dimension. It was an instant before it was all surreal. I was an actress in a movie playing out someone else's life. Speechless, I hung up the phone, not knowing what I was supposed to do next. I sat in the chair that I had cradled and rocked and fed my baby girl just six years earlier and listened. And I listened for anything. As I pulled myself together, I began feverishly planning I was going to beat this thing. Time to make phone calls. Let's see, I need to go to a surgeon. That's the next step. The appointment was set. OK, now I need to find an oncologist. All right, all done. Just have to get through the MRI and sentinel node biopsy, and I will know what has to be done. I can do this. The MRI results are in. I don't like the look on my doctor's face. I thought this was going to be a slam dunk. Deep breath. OK, let me have it. Cancer in both breasts. Left side lobular carcinoma with a 10 centimeter area affected. Right side ductal carcinoma with three lumps ranging in 0.5 to 1 centimeter. Lymph node involvement, both sides. I have no idea what else my doctor said. I had slipped into that other dimension again. The fear was gripping. The people around me sounded like the grown-ups talking in the Charlie Brown holiday specials, you know, the wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Sitting next to me, I saw my brother's face turn white as a sheet. This cannot be good. This cannot be good. However, this is where my nightmare began its metamorphosis into a dream. A dream of light, of hope, and of angels. The first one finding me, huddled and scared, sitting on a doctor's office table. She came in a form, wearing a white lab coat. She threw her arms around me and instantly filled me with comfort and strength. We were a team. In the days and months that followed, countless angels came to visit and care for me. The one who shaved my head, the one who emptied out surgery drains, the one who sat with me through my chemo sessions and ran to Togo's every time I had even an inkling of an appetite for turkey and avocado sandwiches. The one who planted my garden, my vegetable garden. The ones who cared for my six-year-old daughter, doing her homework with her, giving her rides to brownies, CCD, and playdates. My neighbor's 20-year-old cat, Bibi, who slept with me on my bed every day throughout treatment. The vision of my deceased father in a form of light, stretching his fingers out to meet mine with the unspoken message that all would be fine. The angel, who must have left a seat in the yard in front of my bedroom window. As I looked out one morning where there was nothing the previous day, there rose up and through the dry, cracked earth that had not seen water in months, a sunflower reaching for the heavens. There were the angels who walked until their feet bled in the name of raising money for a cure to help destroy this evil foe called cancer. However, the ones that affected me to the very core were the survivors, gracing me with their stories of promise, love, inspiration, and countless miracles. As time progressed and my treatment took its course, I began to sort out the enormity of what lay ahead in battling stage three breast cancer. 
Clarity came out of confusion, and life had in it an intensity I'd never felt before. Colors were brilliant. Time had slowed down. I did not know if I would be successful in this struggle, but I knew I was going to tackle it with monomaniacal determination, and in that I knew that I had to begin to view life with a lighter side. I found humor in some of the everyday crazy experiences that I encountered with the effects of treatment. My bars of soap lined up next to my nose as I lay in bed so that horrid smells in the house didn't cause me to heave. <laughs> Sending my mother home after her lunch, which had been clearly laden with garlic, the number of pillows that had to be immediately extricated from my room because of torture, torturous odors from where they seemed to emanate. The new second home, my bathroom, was as familiar as my bed during the months that I struggled to manage diarrhea. And the calls to the doctor for Norco to deal with the pain of none other than hemorrhoids? Which frankly came as a complete surprise. That was only supposed to happen during pregnancy. One of my angels and I would laugh hysterically as my surgical drains would swing from side to side as I wandered around the house. I actually grew accustomed to the heaviness of their pull whenever gravity took its hold. But the fog that infiltrated my thoughts and memory later on did cause me some distress until I managed to turn the experience of chemo brain into a fun-filled challenge of what is the stupidest thing I can say or do today. <laughs> many of you out there. <laughs> On several occasions while returning to parking lots, I tried to enter into cars that looked like mine. <laughs> there, were the standard, there was the standard for getting what the conversation was about in the middle of speaking a sentence to a friend. I remember putting all my materials together for my tax man. Clearly, my medical expenses were a big part of what I had to include. So I tried to find my total expenses on the insurance company's website. Geez, no matter how hard I tried, I could not find any expenses from September to December. I called the 800 number. The gal at the other end of the phone had no idea why I wouldn't be able to access those expenses between September and December. After arguing for a while, completely aggravated, I demanded a supervisor. I retold my story. And as I was recounting my frustration, it dawned on me. I had switched to a different insurance company in September. <laughs> Then there was the time when I put my compression sleeves on, testing them on my arms for a plane trip I was about to take. Hmm. They don't fit that well. I know I wanted to be fitted for these. Why are they so loose? They were loose on top, and there were inches and inches of extra material in and around the armpit. I took my box and compression sleeves and stomped to the store where I had purchased them, furious that I had been ripped off. The fitting technician looked at me, and then at the sleeves. Miss Ardini, these sleeves are the ones for your legs. <laughs> yes, incredibly embarrassing. Lo and behold, my arm compression sleeves were stashed away at the bottom of another drawer, and they do fit perfectly. <laughs> Yet even with laughter and light moments that were in my life, darkness did reveal itself on occasion, no matter how deep or hard I reached within. I had to shout louder for my spiritual angels. With time, they would come, but only after I'd proven how much I was willing to grow. In October of 2010, I began having trouble breathing. Fatigue was with me around the clock. I had just finished the Making Strides walk in San Francisco, pushing myself the entire five miles right after finishing treatment. I was only a bit concerned about how I was feeling. Treatment had just ended. There was no reason to doubt the state of my improved health, other than recovering from all the poisons that had bombarded my body in the last nine months. A call to a doctor and a chest x-ray later. Infiltrates, present in both lungs. Pneumonia? Two zip packs. No improvement. Heidi, there must be something else going on here. Let me get back to you with an appointment for a CT scan. Disbelief. It can't be. Was it back? Back to rob me of my life? My daughter? Of her mother? The phone is ringing. Dread's closing in. Hello? Heidi, I'm afraid the earliest we can get you in for your scan is next week. Next week? Oh no, I can't handle that. 
I have to know now. And I head over to the emergency room. I'm waiting to get my CT scan results. They just put an IV through a vein in my neck. I had to remind them no needles in my arms, threat of lymphedema. I've been admitted and I'm on a stronger antibiotic in case it is pneumonia. A bronchoscopy is set for Monday. Man, this is getting tough. Results to be in by Tuesday. Hey, guess what? No cancer. I can handle anything else. I'm going home. We'll try out a heavy dose of prednisone. Wow, this stuff is doing wonders for my breathing, and I have tons of energy. <laughs> Only thing is, I can't stop eating. <laughs> My weight skyrocketed on the prednisone, and I found that there was, for me, another disturbing side effect. I was living in a virtual hell. My days were full of sadness, emptiness, loneliness, and despair. This is crazy. There's nothing wrong with me. What on earth am I depressed about? Pull yourself out of it, Heidi. My daughter, she began to unravel. Typical morning. She has started waking up three hours before school, sharpening pencils until they break and then sharpening more pencils until they break over and over and over again. I had to call the principal to help, get me, to help get my daughter out of my car from the school parking lot. As she's pulled towards the classroom, she looks back over her shoulder towards me, tears streaming. No, mama, no, mama, I don't want to leave you. My angels, where are you? I need you now more than ever. And once again, they arrive at my side. It has been almost two years since that life-changing phone call in December 2009, which I had mistakenly assumed was an invitation for a New Year's family gathering. Much has come to pass. At the age of 20, Bibi, my neighbor's cat, wandered from home and found a place to lay for her eternal sleep. I still miss her. Now and then, I swear, I catch fleeting glimpses of her walking around in my yard. She is watching over me. The vision of my father and his message brings me strength and determination in the moments when I am overcome with doubt. The angels continue to descend and surround me. I have found a meaning in life that had eluded me for so many years. Although the intensity, I do, oh, let me back up, intensity, I felt the intensity I felt has diminished itself into days of routine and mundane tasks belonging to a single mother of a normal third grader. They will never again be taken for granted. As I will not forget, I will not allow myself to forget. Both physically, the blessings continue to abound. My mentors work with me in my healing, both physically and emotionally, preparing me for my calling in search of my true self is I evolve within a new realm where I recognize that within me I have found that I am light, I am love, and I am joy. But first and foremost, I am hope.